Very good afternoon, good morning. Welcome to the FX Week Ahead Live Market Analysis with myself, Giles Coughlin. I do hope everybody is doing well. Good to see some good familiar names here. Alejandro, good to have you here. Ritza, Fahad, Gavrel, welcome back. Horatio, good to have you here. Mihai, welcome back. Navas, Ute, I think a very warm welcome to you. Uh, if you could just let me know, you can see my screen and hear my voice okay using the chat function or the question function that would be great do hope everybody is doing well quite an interesting week there are opportunities this week that i can see so really want to get ourselves uh, on top of that um i think everything is coming through my end if you've got a moment someone could just tap in the box and let me know they can see see my screen hear my voice okay that would be super uh... yeah fine excellent right so uh, don't forget, as we look at different instruments, exits, different um, trading scenarios, this is not a trading signal service or trading advice. The whole idea of this is educational. You look over my shoulder. Uh, thank you, Elaritza, as a professional uh, trading analyst. And uh, you see how I go about making my own personal trading decisions. Uh, the workshop for Wednesday will be a trade plan for U.S. inflation data. It may actually be the U.S. initial actually yeah i've actually got the wrong screenshot up there yeah we should be having this is this week's menu there we go right. on wednesday we will be looking at a preview and trade plan for the us initial jobless claims so i'll just be uh, showing you what my preview is for that um and how i'm looking at trading the u.s initial jobless claims i'll show you some of the key kind of things to be looking out for new zealand inflation that's going to be important this week particularly after the rbnz met last week i'll just quickly run through what they're saying uh, i think we've got some can inflation data out this week as well and we've got some uk inflation data important i'm going to have a quick look at china's uh outlook there um as well as gold and silver a lot of upside we saw last week in gold and silver i'll explain why that is the case and what's potentially driving it as well as looking at OPEC uh, and whether OPEC plus put a bottom in prices so I'll just be running through that as well okay folks quite a lot to cover so I'm going to get stuck in without further ado so just going to go over to the charts first thing just to build up your um, knowledge okay so last week we had the Bank of Canada meet and what they decided to do was raise interest rates by 25 basis points that's the second 25 basis points uh, hike in two meetings and um, make sure you go along to, go along to the blog blog.hycmlab.com um, and make sure you follow along the central bank watch I cover all the central banks there meeting by meeting so if you want to know what the central banks are doing which you need to for currency trading um, then you want to be checking that out and what they basically said and you'll read if you read through this in detail later you'll see that basically the Bank of Canada is sort of saying that they've hiked by 25 basis points and they may need to hike more if inflationary pressures get worse. So what this tells you is that they're concerned about inflation. So if we see inflation rapidly falling off, that will reassure the Bank of Canada, they're likely to do less in interest rates, so that would weaken the CAD, okay? If inflation is worse, and that would mean inflation is worse than the Bank of Canada expected. They'll need to hike interest rates even more, and that would support the CAD higher. Okay, so that's what's going on there with the uh, Bank of Canada. Um, and just bear that in mind with the print. We also had a meeting last week from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Okay, now if you look at inflation in New Zealand, you can see it's still quite high well above the 2% target, you know, it's triple the 2% target, 6.7%. So what the RBNZ did at the last meeting is they kind of signaled mission accomplished. In other words, we, we, we've done hiking interest rates, but they surprised markets a little bit because they indicated that they, they would be holding rates for the foreseeable future. So it added more of a staying weight to that picture. So they were sort of saying, yeah, we've hiked interest, we finished hiking interest rates, but they were indicating that they might have to stay there for the foreseeable future. And if 
inflation surprises to the upside, then there may need to be another interest rate hike. So once again, inflation data for New Zealand is going to be crucial uh, that's coming out this week as well. So that should have, you know, that sort of helps set the tone uh, for the week. Now, as we went into this week, if you notice, what we've been seeing is a lot of dollar weakness. So if you look at the dollar, you see last week it was dollar weakness, dollar weakness, dollar weakness. Why did we see that dollar weakness? That was for one very important reason. And that was last week we had a big miss in the US CPI data on Wednesday the 12th. All right? You see that inflation data? Core inflation, this is the one that got the market's attention, came in below market's minimum expectations at 4.8%. So with inflation that low, it means the Federal Reserve will have to do less. So that's negative for yields, negative for the dollar. That's where the dollar fell. Hooray, hooray, the market says UK inflation, uh, US inflation is uh, falling. And look, the headline, 3%. Okay, so it's getting back towards that 2% target and the core's heading down lower as well. And that's why if you look at short-term interest rate expectations, you can see that short-term interest rate markets are now expecting a rate cut in the March of next year. So all of that just allowed the dollar to weaken last week. You see that from, you know, into the meeting with the CPI miss. And then when we had the miss on the 12th, right, dollar sold off that day, dollar sold off the next day. So that allowed stocks to gain. Why did stocks gain? Stocks gained on hopes of lower interest rates. Lower interest rates mean less restrictive environment for US companies, so stocks were gaining as well. That also allowed commodities to gain. So we saw with the drop in yields and the dollar, that supported silver and gold sharply higher. Look at silver. Absolutely stunning week last week for silver. You can see here, look at that, fantastic. You know, 8.8% 8 .8 gain last week for silver. Um, gold last week, 1.5% gain. So very strong uh, upside for silver and gold. We also saw WTI Brent crude gaining as well. We had OPEC plus meeting uh, earlier in this month where they basically said, Saudi said, going to do whatever it takes to support oil prices all right so that in line with the, the weaker dollar has been helping markets so the markets have kind of been in that vibe in that feel okay us inflation the worst is behind us now whether that carries on or not we'll have to see okay but what we need to look for is um some interesting data points out this week so first thing to say, Chinese data, a bit mixed. GDP growth rate, look at that, 6.3% year on year, below the 7.3% expected, retail sales missing. But industrial production higher and month on quarter on quarter GDP growth rate up and unemployment rate down. Um, the outlook for China, the worse it gets, the more likely we are to see stimulus. So just watch out for Chinese data. We've had a lot of bad news priced in now. So you can see markets trying to make some kind of bottom here, right? You can see them trying to bottom around this kind of, you know, around this kind of 12,000 level, right? Um, and markets are trying to, to move down that, down that region. Um, and what that means, is that this could well be a bottom for China 50. And the lower this gets, the more likely we are to see stimulus reports from China. So with China's 50, you know, having fallen from, you know, the peak of 2021 and the trough of 2022, you can see that that is greater than the 45% fall. So does this offer value for medium term buyers? You know, that's the question. Um, no reason why prices can't keep moving low. Of course, there's risks. But I think as long as we stay above this trend line, buyers are in control. Get back below this trend line, then buyers have lost control. Above this trend line, buyers are in control. Risk can be defined quite nicely just underneath that 11,000 region. 
So that's the outlook with China. Just interesting to see that China data out to start the week. Now, very quiet day today. You've got a Japanese holiday, not much going on. Tuesday, we start to see something more interesting. And what we see on Tuesday is the Canadian inflation data. Okay, so look, year on year data expected to come in at three, down from 3.4. Core expected to come in 3.6, down from 3.7. So if we just look at the uh, Canadian data, you can see here, right? Headline data stepping down, 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 expected to fall again. Excellent. And the, the core data, you can see that's down, down, down. So core headline all stepping lower. But remember the Bank of Canada, if this surprises at the upside, then we'll likely see some strength in the CAD. Because at the moment, if you look at the Bank of Canada, you'll see that markets are expecting them to stay on hold now for the rest of this year. But if there is a significant drop to the downside, then maybe that will indicate that there could be interest rate cuts coming. Um, if it goes very high, and you see the, see the headline coming in above maximum expectations at 3.1, and the core coming in above the prior 3.7, then that should support the CAD. So the, thing, the first thing to look for is on Tuesday, this comes in above market maximum expectations, or above 3.1 for the headline, above 3.7 for the core. Expect the CAD to gain. So maybe you'd expect US dollar CAD downside. All right. If it's the other way around, say you see very um, weak data, headline comes in below 2.9, say the headline comes in at 2.8, and the core comes in about 3.4, then you'd expect the CAD to weaken, and maybe you'd expect, um, would pair it with a strong currency for the day. All right. Now, US retail sales are also coming up later in the session. I do have an uh, outlook for that on, on the blog. On HYCM's blog, I've written a piece on that. So if you go to focus of the week, you can see the outlook that I've done for US retail sales. And basically, what we want to see is a clear move higher or lower from the data as a collection. What I mean by that is on aggregate. If there's a sharp move lower in all the readings, I would likely take that, that investors will see that the impact of the Fed's right hikes, right hikes has been felt, and so there's less need for aggressive interest rates. So that should be negative dollar, negative yields, upside gold, upside silver. So if this comes in, headline comes in below minus 0.1% month on month, and the year on year comes in below like 0.8%, then I'd expect that to send gold and silver higher. If it's high, I'm not interested in seeing that as a tradable opportunity because the US economy has been stronger than the market's been expecting. So that's kind of expected. The surprise would be a miss in the retail sales. Remember US, about 70% of America's economic growth uh, comes from the service sector, and about 30% of that 70% comes from the US retail sales. So very significant print for the state of the US economy. Got a couple of Fed speakers, just watch out for that, that can move stocks. And remember the narrative that they will be testing is, is the Fed still on path to hike interest rates twice this year? That's the last message from the Fed's dot plot, and that's what markets kind of have as the base level. Now, then we have New Zealand inflation rate. Now, this is interesting. Look at the year on year. Expected to fall to 5.9, right? Um, and, the, and the quarter on quarter down to 0 0.9. The low is 5.8. So the best opportunity here would definitely be on a big miss in the, in the data. Okay, and so what you're going to look for is a big miss in New Zealand inflation. Now, 6.7 is still quite high, isn't it? But what's expected on the overnight is 5.9. So if it comes in at 5.8 or lower, 
and the quarter and quarter comes to 0.8 or lower, I'd expect the New Zealand dollar to weaken. And the currency pair I'd expect to gain would be Aussie New Zealand dollar upside. So that's what I'd be looking for, Aussie New Zealand dollar upside in that environment, okay? Let's have a little look at that. Okay, so you can see at the moment, since the sort of RBA turned more hawkish, we've had a little bit of upside. We have had a bit of a move. Technically, we found a little bounce on that 50% um, FIB level, moved up to the next FIB level. We're now at that 618 FIB level, and we're sort of there at a key pivot point on uh, the daily chart. Uh, this is, looks like a weekly pivot point to me. That's, uh, this is a monthly tip pivot point okay so just get rid of that so it's a monthly pivot point we're right there okay so a big miss in the data expect more Aussie New Zealand dollar upside and you expect the first target at that 0 0.8045 back up to that 50% FIB level but that's only I would expect that only 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 if we get a big miss in the data if the data comes in higher than expected that that's not a tradable opportunity for me um, because um, high inflation is kind of expected. Horatio says, good question. Hi, Giles, I'm looking to short pound Aussie dollar for a medium term play. Going over some research articles, I read that lower growth and lower economic data out of China would mean further stimulus from the PBOC um, and the government, therefore supportive for Australian dollar. And if Australian jobs and inflation data remain strong, should mean further hikes from the RBA. So it's almost like a, a low risk to bet on the Aussie and the pound thinking that the mortgage refinancing to higher rates that's supposed to take place in the coming months in the UK probably should hurt the UK economy. Tick, tick, tick. I'm, a, I'm loving your logic, uh, Horatio. Possibly hurting growth in the future. Uh, plus the pound being extreme long positioning. Exactly. Seems like a good opportunity at current levels. Exactly. Chart shows head and shoulders pattern form. What do you think? I love it. I love it. I've got a similar outlook myself, Horatio, but on pound yen, based with the Bank of Japan, potentially exiting interest rates your logic's absolutely sound i couldn't fault anything in it um you know of course there's risks and the risks are that the timing doesn't quite work and the, 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 the pace of the change doesn't happen um i'm just being yeah head and shoulders pattern forming on that let me just do a this is worthy of a little bit of attention okay so we're going to look at this pound Australian dollar downside medium term makes sense. I'm going to give you the big, like the big kind of reference points that I can see technically. Right. So first of all, if you if you if your view is right, there's no way price should move above this trend line. So risk can be quite tightly managed. That's on the monthly chart. Also, you'd expect to find serious sellers at that level, 1.9600. That's the first point to know. Second point to know, we have that R1 pivot. That is a yeah, the monthly pivot point. Right, that makes sense. Uh, let's see what else I can see here. It's in the weekly chart. Still got this uh, resistance here, major level. Like stops above that R2, you think, gosh, you know, above that price swing point. That feels well out of the way. Bit heavy, that's the only thing. Possibly head and shoulders pattern forming. Yeah, see, what I would like from this, and I think if this was me, Horatio, what I'd say is, look, if my view is correct, then this trend line is going to break. Um, you know what I mean? So I'd expect some momentum to the downside. Is this a head and shoulders pattern? If we start to see a, a rounding pattern there, then the head and shoulders pattern will become that. That will become the neckline. And you get an extension from this 1.1900 region down to that S1 pivot and the 100 exponential moving average. So, do you know... Horatio, you know, you've got UK inflation data coming out on Wednesday. So I'll show you what we can look at. But potentially, so there's a big miss in the inflation data on Wednesday. 
selling pound Aussie dollar at market makes sense in anticipation of that break in anticipation of a of that forming a head and shoulders pattern do you see what I mean left shoulder head potential right shoulder so we get to Wednesday price is there or here and then all of a sudden get a get big miss in the in the UK inflation data or a big beat you right either will probably do you probably see pound pushing through all of that makes sense excellent Horatio excellent 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 very sound logic um so that was worth taking a little bit of a, a detour for um now this is the potential catalyst for what Horatio is talking about say that inflation print on Wednesday I've been speaking sending out comments to sort of UK media here on this um, this morning because it's such an important uh, data point um, yeah yeah that's it Aussie jobs UK so you got it you got it I've just I've just seen your questions now Horatio yeah you know we're just in we're just in sync here so what you got is the UK inflation data if this comes in very low core sub 6.6 .6, headline sub 8 percent then I'd expect the pound to fall significantly because the markets will be pricing out some of that recent hawkishness that we've seen in the Bank of England pricing um, with interest rates look expected to go above six percent now in the UK uh, that's that's for arguably you know from a week ago five 25 basis point rate hikes um, that will get priced out if this starts plummeting lower now I'll tell you something in the UK this is June's data right? uh, so this is June's data look at headline that's quite heavy isn't it you know 8.7 for April and May June's data is expected to come up is expected to fall core look at that it's just heading the wrong direction in the UK really wrong direction so what a couple of analysts I've been reading are saying okay the time for UK inflation data to drop is July's reading why because that's when the kind of energy price cap change will hit the UK data so this month energy prices in the UK have dropped significantly for consumers and businesses um, that means that this data is still reflecting the higher energy prices but July's print won't so this is still likely to be high but the next one is going to be the really important one so just bear that in mind Horatio um, but also bear in mind people are expecting the next one to be really important so you could start to see the pound losing value from now and I could see some people using a weak print here as a catalyst for further weakness in, in, in the pound um, so that's one thing now the other thing is the other risk is the stagflation risk so if this headline inflation comes in very very high like 7.2 percent and the core yeah core comes in 7.2 headline comes in 8.7 it means that there's a big problem in the UK it means inflation has to be dealt with very very seriously and on top of that, um, that will mean that the UK growth will probably slow because interest rates will have to be so high. So it will be negative for the pound. Now you've got to be a bear in mind here. This is tricky and I could be wrong. So, you know, you could see higher inflation and interest rates go up higher and the pound doesn't sell off. But that's a big risk. So the, the risk is asymmetric. That If we see a low print, see pound weakness, but also a high print could see the pound fall due to stagflation risks. Um, if you don't understand that don't trade it if you do understand it bear in mind that as you will probably be aware that there's a chance the pound still doesn't respond the way it may do to an to stagflation sometimes it's been behaving that way sometimes it hasn't so it's a bit of a tricky one right? um jobs data 20th of july been very strong jobs data in in australia I think you've been seeing the response talk about that the Reserve Bank, Reserve Bank of Australia they've mentioned that the um, you know labor data and inflation data is very important for the Australia if, if, if 
Labour data surprises the upside. Expect the Aussie to potentially gain against the New Zealand dollar. OK, so if we see on Thursday strong Aussie jobs, but we've seen weak UK inflation, then Horatio's uh, pun punching the air because pound Australian dollar weakness makes sense. OK. Um, yeah. Now I'll just show you something else, Horatio, because you'll be able to appreciate this is if you look at the pound yen, the narrative with the pound yen short, right, is that the Bank of Japan may eventually exit their yield curve control and start hiking interest rates. And if you look at the pound yen from a seasonal perspective, look at this seasonal pattern, like from, when's today? Right, so from today right, into the start of September, or even just there, you know, look, 65% plus falls there's been in the pound yen. So the yen does seem to strengthen around this time of the year. So pound yen is worth thinking about as well. Uh, just put that in your pot. But the pound Australian dollar can't fault it. And with those data points coming up, very, very lovely ratio. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. On Wednesday, I'll talk through uh, initial jobless claims. It's a tradable opportunity. I'll also run through the Aussie employment data. Um, so if there is that outlook on Wednesday, uh, I won't be there. So no, it's on Wednesday. I'll be looking at the um, initial jobless claims. But Wednesday, when I do the workshop, I'll run through this inflation print as well. Okay, so I will look at this and then I'll show you a potential um situation that could materialize that pound aussie outlook which uh makes sense uh japanese inflation data you can see the headline 3.5 core 3.3 percent inflation is very low in japan if you just take a look at the print you'll see look japanese inflation comparatively low and moving in the right direction but if this starts moving higher and you know headline is 3.2 percent um, core is coming in at 3.2 as well. But if that starts moving in the wrong direction, then you could see yen strength and more, you know, anticipation that the Bank of Japan may have to uh, hike interest rates, which would strengthen the yen. So bear that in mind for Friday. That takes us to the end of the week. So, it's a, you know, there's a couple of big inflation prints, CAD. UK, Aussie jobs, um, but otherwise a sort of quiet a week. A little bit of US data, um, could see a bit of like, you know, choppy action in the dollar this week. Um, but that's probably, you know, that's the major things. Folks, good work. I will be back, scheduled to be back on Wednesday. Um, we will take a look at the workshop. And in that workshop, we'll be looking at the UK inflation data that's come out, as well as the US initial job list claims. And that's potentially uh, another tradable opportunity for gold and silver. Okay, folks, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, good to have you, Horatio. That's uh, great comments and very helpful for us all. Good learning there. Yeah. Yeah, pound yen downside. Yeah, it makes sense. All right, folks. Lovely, lovely. Do take care and enjoy the rest of your session. Thanks, everyone, now, and goodbye.